constituencies dead <laughs> for a whole day. So, no, I just want to make a few remarks, but the first one is just to say, on behalf of the Centre for International Education, and in a sense I'm also standing in for the director and deputy director, thank you all for attending this workshop and thanks to BASE and ArcFeed for sponsoring it and for coming back to Sussex. I think it's been a great addition to the work of Sussex and I think it makes a big difference to the kinds of debate which thinking we should and do engage in. A few things. I mean, I guess one of the questions that should be at the back of your minds is, you know, where is this discussion going to go to? over the next year or so. In a sense, I think, you know, well, I think what you will get, and this is part, uh, it's part a point about the political process, but partly it's a prediction. I think you're not gonna get an agreement of all these different goals. There are just too many organizations with too many different goals. And in fact, the high level panel goals are a bit tacked on at the end of the document because they do say it's illustrative and we thought about it almost at the last minute, you know, uh, having written the report we had to. So I think all you get around September this year from the process is, I think, two things. The broad contours of the development framework, you know, what are the main things one is going to look at? You might get some agreement around what are the main priorities are. You might get some agreement around what the areas of convergence are, and some understanding of at least the areas of divergence. I certainly think it'd be unrealistic to expect by September a fully, uh, fully fleshed out set of goals and priorities, targets and indicators. Anyway, you can't have large consultative processes to do some of the hard work about that. You're probably going to have to do a little bit more thinking. But I think that's an important first step. And I think part of the political issue here is to understand the stages you're at in the discussion and the dialogue. And I think this is really about clearing grounds. You know, It's still an unresolved issue in the debate of whether the paradigm or argument of sustainable development will thread through all the goals. And you can see echoes of that in the high-level panel report and whether that's going to then influence the whole setting of the goals. So I think there's a lot more political processes and arguments go. I think it will be over time that the targets and indicators will become a lot more clearer. But I think there is some settling down of those targets and indicators. And I think, in a sense, one of the agreements that seems to come out, no matter how they cut it, you know, whether it's Education International or Save the Children, however they cut it, they all agree on something called basic education, nine years. Uh, because it integrates lower secondary, and they agree not because it's a, it's a future-looking agenda, because it's, anyway, it's a growing reality in many countries anyway. So I think you'll get some of that. I think where the unresolved issues are around what level of investment in upper, in upper secondary education and higher education is going to be, and that's where the limits of the rights-based agenda comes to the fore. You know, is the right to higher education a fundamental right of free education? or not, and different countries take different it. Like the Africa Union, NEPAD, and the UNESCO collection, UNESCO regional meeting in Africa took a different stance to others, the Latin American and Car Caribbean countries when they met, uh, convened by UNESCO around the status of higher education. They all agreed it was important. They couldn't agree how it was going to be financed, publicly or privately or a mixture of both. Because fundamentally, they couldn't agree also whether it was a right or not. And there are different takes on whether it's a right. It's clearly, if you're poor and marginalized, then clearly uh, resources cannot be a barrier for higher education. But whether if you're rich, then if, if it's a right for the rich, that's a debatable issue. So I think that's where the other unresolved. I said early on this morning, I think what has dropped off the agenda really is not the agreement about pre-primary education, and that's quite clear in consensus, is the agreement about the early years. And in fact, uh, if you read another document, the South Africa's National Development Plan, what is interesting about that document is that it recognizes that the early years, so that's the zero to three, zero to five years, 
is the most privately provided form of care and education globally, right? But certainly in South Africa, it's mainly private providers. Now, private providers is a generous concept because it includes private sector organization, community organization, individuals looking after children in their own house, homes, whether they're regulated or unregulated is different. But I think none of the reports tackle that aspect. And in fact, the inequities in education don't start at pre-primary, they start a long time before. And I think that's the lesson of the GMR ECC. I think the other thing that's still not yet resolved, and as I said this morning, that will come out much longer, is that while there may be clarity about what the UN Millennium Development or Goals process or development framework looks like, it's unclear what the status of and revisions to the EFA process will look like because UNESCO has a different timetable of resolving it. And UNESCO are thinking of the World Conference on EFA in April 2015 in South Korea. So that's, they've got, they're slightly on a different timetable to the UN organizations. Clearly there needs to be a link, as I said, but how those two things are going to be resolved is going to be a key issue. I guess at the end of the day, the fundamental issue, which I think the high-level panel does and all the other reports don't tackle adequately, is about, and they don't, they mention it, and I think it's much clearer in the governance consultation, which is interesting because it talks about the political economy of change and the political economy of development. Because in a sense, a lot of these issues are not going to be transacted on simple, straightforward, here's a set of what we consider rational goals and let's go for it. It's going to be transacted on the basis of political interest, political bargaining, political arguments within and across nation states. And I think the governance consultation is very strong on that. And that's why the principles of the governance report, although it's not final, it's an outcome of their last meeting in Johannesburg, is quite illustrative. And that's why I think, in a sense, the education discussion needs to take into account those other thematic consultations, like the inequalities thematic consultation in the governance. What is also not said a lot of is that what is interesting about some of these proposals, whether they by education groups or by high-level panel groups, despite their criticisms that the current MDGs is a series of disconnected uh, sectoral interest project, they end up reproducing exactly those sectoral interest projects in what they articulate. So none of the education proposals clearly tackle adequately health issues, and the health consultation is saying exactly that. None of the education uh, consultations or proposals take seriously issues of climate change and environmental sustainability. So there clearly needs to be a little bit more discussion as the process develops between how the education proposals and goals are, are going to be articulated. And lastly, at the end of the day, I mean, here's the big thing, right? Despite the best intentions of all groups, you're not going to get more than one education goals in the future. You know, at best, you might get two. So somehow at the end, you are going to have to tackle the hard question of, how many of the goal, which goal is going to be the one that everybody cherish? And that's where the hard political negotiations are. Um, I guess the last thing to say is just a point about the status of different reports, high level panel, uh, the consultations of Open Development Working Group. They'll all be discussed in the UN General Assembly, but the one document that's perhaps going to be quite significant for the General Assembly is not just the high-level panel report. It's going to be the report that summarizes all 11 consultations of the UNDG-led process. That report, which in its initial draft talks, talks about, I think it was called Realizing the World We Want or something like that, that report will be fundamentally the report of the UN General Secretary. Secretary General representing the consensus of it. And that report will build upon all the national consultations that the UN has undertaken with different countries. And I think part of the, the uh, issue there is how adequately it will reflect on it. 
I think the one thing just to also bear in mind that it is interesting that the open working group on issues of sustainable development is driven by the BRICS countries, right? Which is quite an interesting phenomenon. So on some of the processes, the new emerging players like China, Brazil, etc., Russia, have stronger input and stronger control. And whether the high level panel managed to hold all of that together, I guess, is a question of time. So I guess, in a sense, the status is what it is now, but in the long term, there's going to be a lot more dialogue and debate about it. And fundamentally, I think, by September 2015, because that's when the UN General Assembly normally meets, you, there'll be some greater shape. I predict what you'll see is some kind of Millennium De Declaration type document emerging in September 2013, which will basically articulate broad principles, broad priorities, suggest directions to go that will simply push it forward to say, let's have further discussions and dialogue about the concrete specifications of the goals, targets, and indicators that we call targets and indicators more accurately over the next years. So thank you. Okay.